Hey everyone, uh, on this episode of Bite Tight Bites, I got fuck. Start it over. Just start it <laughs> yeah. over. Fuck. Yeah. Hey everyone, on this episode of Bite Size Talks Episode 7, we'll be talking about a couple movie reviews. I wanted to check out the movie at the bottom, The Good Mother, and the new Liam Neeson movie, uh, Retribution. And we'll be debating whether the Costco hot dog is in fact undefeated. <laughs> See the head shake? Uh, everyone, yeah. <laughs> my name is uh, Gary, aka Hempy. Uh, with us today, we got, of course, Julian. Say what's up, man. Hey, everybody, how's it going? This is Julian or Jupe. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, so today's Friday, so today we got a movie review for you. Today, I was kind of, I was quite busy uh, with that. I went and checked out uh, The Good Mother, uh, the new Liam Neeson movie uh, uh, called Retribution. And one day I wanted to go watch one of those, but it wasn't showing. So I went and was like, okay, what's showing right now? And I watched an unfortunately bad movie called The Bottoms. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'll get into all that. And uh, the kind of the last thing will be officially, you know, officially on the agenda is uh, to talk about if the, the Costco hot dog is, in fact, undefeated. It's a new segment we're starting to where we discuss and debate whether a certain item is, in fact, undefeated. There's something out there is better than it. And in, in, it's all argumentative. It could be a price point. It could be a quality, a convenience, uh, or nostalgia even. So the first one I'm throwing up to see if it's undefeated would be the Costco hot dog, because I think it's the king, king, king of all, king of all hot dogs. All right, we'll get so, into it. But first of all, you went to the movie three times this week. Twice, but I saw three movies. God damn, you need a hobby way. We need to put you on more episodes. <laughs> Going to the movies way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crank out so, more episodes with that amount of time. Uh, I wanted to watch The Good Mother and Retribution. But uh, actually, when we were filming earlier in the week, we went a little bit later than I had anticipated. So by the time I got there, The Good Mother, the good mother was already like 15 minutes into it. So I was like, oh, crap. Like, <laughs> what, what's what's starting right now? Because the, the Liam yeah. Neeson movement wasn't going to start till later. Um, and there's a movie called The Bottoms. And I was like, eh, like I watched the trailer really. Cool. I was like, okay, it's one of those high school comedy, you know, um, kind of like the the counterculture kids. But this one, rather than it being like geeks, like what like would have been like in the eighties or something, this was like a group of lesbians that like made a fight club. <laughs> so I was like, it doesn't seem like my movie, but yeah. I'll be open mind. Let me go watch it. It could be funny. It could be something like uh, I don't know, maybe like american pie was when i was growing up or something like who yeah. knows yeah uh, so i went into it open-minded uh, so we'll start out with the bottoms because it's the bottom of the barrel as far as the movies we'll be reviewing it was quite terrible um initially kind of starts out uh with your general this is our year senior year we're gonna you know uh, we're going to go get laid like, you know, but th- this, these two girls are talking about being lesbians and they show them like, you know, their crushes and yeah. Like, oh yeah. You know, whatever Marissa, like, or whatever the girl's names were. Right. You know, they each had one girl who they had like a mad crush on. Um, it goes off the rails pretty quickly. Like as far as like, they're talking to this one girl who's just kind of odd, you know, just kind of like, uh, just kind of weird and like they're like oh yeah yeah we went to juvie da, da, da. yeah we had we got in fights all the time and then that guy, girl goes and like oh yeah they 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 got in fights in juvie like and then like they let it like it was just i was like it's so un, un um un, like it, it was like just not like wasn't they weren't i think that was the point they were they're trying not to follow like a typical maybe high school story yeah um like um so again, like this wasn't f- for the people to kind of get a little bit of maybe nostalgia of their like glory high school days. Like this is for the kids <laughs> kind of yeah. felt out of place. I'd imagine. Um, so like the football team, the entire football team, there's only like nine kids. What? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like even at the game, like there's like nine football players, which like anybody yeah. who knows anything about football knows that on each side of the, uh, the ball, like offense or defense, there's 11 players. 
and a roster typically has 50, 60 players. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so to have nine, not even a full starting team, like, I was like, <laughs> okay, like, I think they're like poking fun at the fact that, like, you know, like this isn't like a jock movie. Yeah. And, yeah. That makes sense. Um, but like, dude, like half the characters, like, that's not a high school kid. Like, <laughs> that fool looks old as fuck. Like, <laughs> so it was just, uh, just bad. Like, um, the, 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 the premise of it, the, what was driving it forward. And I'm all about a, a corny movie, uh, you know, something with a ridiculous movie plot. Like, okay, I, I'm willing to go down and, you know, travel down that road to have a little fun with it. But this was just, uh, flout out bad and i don't know how it ever got approved uh what do you give it uh out of 10 starting at so is it a zero of one to ten or zero to ten one to ten it's a one it's like, a one so yeah because i'm not gonna go and watch this movie to see if that holds up <laughs> I, I looked it up on rotten tomatoes can you guess what they have on it i be, maybe because of it's it's a bit of a woke movie yeah. Uh they maybe gave it a 40. Not even close. 93 for the tomato meter and 91 for the audience score. And the audience has 250 plus ratings. The tomato meter has 149 reviews. <laughs> I think that's agenda. Like I, I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Can, I can don't you know. look up? I think there's a movie that came out not too long ago. Uh, but it was about a bunch of gay guys. Like it was like it was like a gay like guy movie. Well, that narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Know. It was like and, 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 that, that's a scary Google search. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't know what you're gonna pop up. But like, I think if you put like you know motion picture, uh, something. But like it was, I think it came around maybe around the holidays. Um. Are you looking for it or no? Yeah, motion picture. What? Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, it is like a gay guy film. Like, uh, like because that, that was the thing. It was, it was like a story about like a bunch of gays like in New York or something. Bros? No. I think maybe. Yeah, this is it. But what was the rating this got? Because like this did terribly bad. Eighty-eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. 90%. Okay, I ne- I never watched that movie, but like. I know that was like a, a, a flop as, in terms of its revenue that it got made. And then like the, I think the director was saying like it was a sexist thing or, you know, a discrimination thing that like it didn't do better. Really? Um, yeah. And if you can look like when was it released? I want to say it was during the holidays. Uh, I remember Tim Dillon and Tim Dillon, if you hear Tim Dillon, talk, he talks, he sounds like, uh, like if you had to have like a uh, a radio DJ who smokes cigarettes and just has that scratchy like lawyer cop voice thing going, like yeah, he he looks like he's like Chris Farley. I don't know if you know who Chris Farley is, Tommy nope. Boy. Or... God damn, that's sad. <laughs> um, but like, so he, he, I would say he's like uh, Tim Dillon. Like he. If you were to have a character caricature like of a normal dude, like beer drinking, beer belly guy, yeah, that's Tim Dillon. But Tim Dillon's also gay, so like, like okay. he he doesn't he doesn't carry over any like the traditional like Hollywood gay, like, yeah, you know whether you know, trim, knee, you know whatever the characteristics might be. Like he is like so not that, <laughs> and like <laughs> and he's very like. Uh, you know, and he's very on the nose with that. Like he isn't that. Like he is something totally, in, entirely different. Yeah. Um, so it, he was this talking, movie was re- this movie was released in 2022. So last year. No what time of year. Like what I month? don't know. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Uh, but yeah, but Tim Dillon was talking. He's like, oh, yeah, why? Of course, like America, like doesn't want like he wa- he had a good little rant about it. Go look it up. But uh, yeah, getting back to the bottoms, like it was just a bad movie. And it just like the script didn't make sense. It wasn't cohesive. I think there were like, there were people in the, in the theater with me, like they were laughing at certain points, but like 
I, it was the first time after a movie, like I wanted to look to the people and be like, was that like, did you guys like that? Like, was <laughs> what, was that good? Because I, I just, I was like, I know, I know yeah. I'm not the target audience. Yeah. But I was like, this is just bad. Like, it, it just was not good. It wasn't like, there's no, like the continuity wasn't there. The flow, the only person I liked in it was Marshawn Lynch. Um, he played uh, a teacher in it and like his character was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the storyline just was terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible, uh, effects, terrible. It was just overall a bad movie. Like, so what's the other ones that you watched? Uh, so the other one was the good mother. That nah, just kind of fell flat. I'd give it a four out of 10. Um, it's a mom whose son dies. Son was involved in, uh, certain aspects of uh of a uh, drug life we'll say okay and you know she ends up trying to figure out what happened to her son and um i'll leave it at that as far as the story goes i don't want to throw any spoilers so uh, but for again, the on tomatoes on that one tomato meter 20 percent, audience score 36 percent. yeah i'd say 36 right where you put it four out of ten yeah um yeah and that one is just like again it just nothing great nothing like spectacular like nothing that was like groundbreakingly different about it that made it like oh wow that was a new twist on something yeah um and then the last one uh liam neeson's uh retribution um you know uh it's him uh have you ever seen the movie speed yes okay uh, similar to something like that. He's in a car rather than like, if you go below this speed, you die. It's, um, being held, you know, there's a, I guess I can say this part. There's a bomb under his car seat Okay. and do everything I tell you or you and your kids die because his kids were in the car with him. Okay. So, uh, it's him trying to navigate what this dude's making him do the and the whole time they're trying to set him up for like looking like he's committing all these crimes and stuff uh so he's trying to clear his name while trying to unravel the mystery um again like i, I as i'm watching it like i i kind of figured out the the whole twist at the end um so like it wasn't uh it wasn't too masterfully like cloaked, I would say. Okay. Um, and before that, like it's again, like wasn't a bad movie the way it was produced and whatnot, but it's just like kind of very similar to like a lot of other movies. So again, nothing original, creative. Uh, I enjoyed it slightly more than The Good Mother, so I'd say I'd give this like a five out of ten. Yeah. So for this one, it's it's bit it's a bit off as far as the audience versus the critics. The critics give it a twenty five percent. The audience gives it a sixty-six percent. Yeah, so, like, yeah, right around there. Yeah, I'm within the standard deviation of the audience, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but like you know, not, nothing. To, none of these are worth rushing out to go see. I mean, I, the only reason I go is because I have that twenty dollars a month movie pass. Um, yeah. So to me, it's like ah, like let me go get my money's worth. Uh, sort of a deal. Now, is there any movie that you're excited to see that might be coming out soon? Yeah, actually, released today. Uh, you're gonna laugh at me for this one, <laughs> but I, it's 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 the third part of a of a trilogy. Okay. Uh, I watched the first two during COVID, even though the first ones came out like when I was probably in high school or middle school. Can you guess it or no? No clue. Uh, my big fat Greek wedding three. Oh, God, that sounds familiar. Why does that sound familiar? It's a rom com. Uh, oh, God, are you serious? Dude, the first, like, talk shit. Yeah, go ahead. But the first two movies are so much fun. Like, I, I they're funny. Uh, it's unique humor. Uh, it, uh, but I've learned after becoming a fan of the, of those movies was that the, the main woman in it, she actually made this as a one woman show, like just kind of doing like performing art stuff, like started telling okay. a story and it slowly built into a movie, which is very similar to one of my favorite movies, a Bronx tale. Um, Chaz Palminteri, 
he started the idea of just writing this and then tried it out in his acting group. I'm like, oh, hey, that's actually pretty good. So he did, he worked yeah. on it five five minutes at a time. And let me add this. Let me try that. Let me add this. Let me try that. And eventually he had 90 minutes of a one-man show. Oh, shit. And that was spun off into one of the uh, really great movie. Everybody should go check it out called A Bronx Tale. Um, but uh, I don't I don't know if my big fat Greek wedding had this in the beginning, but A Bronx Tale, a big part of that was uh, – all the major actors wanted to buy the rights to this one man, uh, this one man show. And Chaz Pilamentary was like, no, like I want to, I want to write it and I want to start. I, I want to play Sonny. Sonny's like the oh, main monster. In the movie. Yeah. Uh, the similar to like what Stallone did with Rocky. Yeah. Um, and they're like, no. And like, dude, he, this guy was flat broke, like $20 oh, to his name, old beat yeah. up piece of shit car. His car was actually so bad he wasn't able to go sign a deal with a uh, agent with like an agent company oh, uh, damn. to represent him. So they they actually leased him a Cadillac for a couple of years and like, <laughs> um, but he had like his car because his car wasn't able to like run. Um, but uh, at one point, I think they offered him like they started like at two hundred thousand dollars. Imagine not having a dime to your name, dude, and somebody offering <laughs> you two hundred thousand dollars, and you're like, no, I'm gonna make this movie. <laughs> and that that's ballsy well, that's ballsy to to believe yeah. in your project but and, i mean yeah and when he, he turned that down the his management company was like what the fuck like we brought you to these people to sell yeah. this movie um and then what happened was he was he was at his uh you know he, he did a show and robert de niro uh arguably one of the greatest actors of all time uh they're like oh hey de niro's in your in your in your green room like he wants to talk to you. He's like, oh, really? So he's like, oh, hey, man, love the show. Da, da, da. And then Chad's like, hey, I know I know why you're here. And and I know what you're going to say. And De Niro's like, well, I know what you're going to say. Well, why don't you hear me anyway? Like, you know, kind of like spun it back on him. Yeah. And he's like, look, he goes, I don't want to. He's like, I don't want to play Sonny. You have to play Sonny. This is De Niro telling him, like, you got to be Sonny. I want to play um, the character in the movie that like who the the, the story that uh, they, they follow throughout the movie is this kid named Colodro or C. Yeah, so I want to play his dad. He's like, but you you got to play Sonny. And Chaz Palantir is like, so I'll be Sonny, and like you're gonna direct it. He's like, yeah. He's like, if, if you shake my hand right now, that's what will happen. Oh shit! So he shook his hand, and like once you get Robert De Niro to sign on that he wants to make a movie, and this is the format that he wants it that movie's going to get made, you know, that's especially. Wild, yeah. So like, because of that, like that's how this movie came about and it's a really good movie. Uh, I know it's able, you're able to buy it, uh, rent it on prime. Um, Oh, I think I'm glitching a little bit. Um, <laughs> Fast forward there for a bit. It, 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 um, uh, <laughs> God, I hate when I do so. that because, because <laughs> you're always going to clip that shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my big fat Greek wedding has its reviews already, but we'll save that for next week. We'll yeah, see what you think first. Hopefully, I should be able to watch it by next Friday. Um, but yeah, the third one comes out uh, this week, and but it's like I think this the first one came out like you could probably see like two thousand two, and then the next one came out I think like two thousand five or six. There's a couple, I don't know, maybe later than that, maybe like two thousand ten. Like there's a good, decent gap, but there's been like a. 15 year gap between this one yeah so the first one was in 2002 and the second one was in 2016 okay yeah so this one you know eight years since that one um they're Damn. fun movies like uh anybody out there like one it's one of those like uh, guilty pleasure movies right like like <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want, I wouldn't cop that. I like watching legally blonde or, you know, like one of those type of movies, but like, you know, you don't exactly change the channel when it comes on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a movie like, you know, I, I can straight up admit that I like, um, it's a fun movie before you like, talk shit, but then go watch it. You know, <laughs> I'll um, check it out. Maybe. Yeah. Dude, I'm sure you, you and your girl would love it. Like it, it's, it's yeah. a fun movie. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll check it out. Um, so moving on to the undefeated topics. This is a new, new sort of segment we're trying to do, and you're bringing up Costco hot dogs. Now, full disclaimer, I've never been to Costco. I've been there maybe once, and I don't remember. 
Um, so, so what's, what's the deal with that? So, okay. Part of the, like Costco is it's nostalgia right, for me. Cause like, dude, my dad yeah. used to like send us in there and like l- let us loose. Yeah. And those free sample ladies, like must've hated me and my brothers. Cause like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we like, I just like keep going back and like, Oh man, these things are good. And like, you know, get three, four, five, ten 10 of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, like, like lady, why, Come on, why kiss. Like, <laughs> Come on, kids, go get your meal for the day. Oh, yeah, at Costco. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, it, a quick side story. My dad sometimes would take us to, like, um, I guess the, the something that's more, because it, it was a, typically an AM, PM, but, like, more generally, that would be, like, a, a 7-Eleven, right? Yeah. But uh, imagine a 7-Eleven that had, like, little cheap, like, shitty, like, hamburgers and corn dogs and not just, like, the hot dogs or maybe, like, those roller things. Yeah. But a b- b- bigger offering of food items and like had a little place where you could pick, fix it up with relish and onions and lettuce and tomatoes. Uh, my dad would take us into an AMPM, which is a gas station based convenience type thing, you know, yeah. and say, all right, me, take me and my three other brothers and be like, all right, everybody gets five bucks. <laughs> and like, dude, this is five bucks in the 90s. So like <laughs> you like, two little hamburgers, a corn dog like a huge freaking slushy and like get a bag of chips, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> and that would be dinner for that day. Just letting us lose the five bucks of AMP money. And the best part, we'd get up to the register. We put all our shit up there. There's corn nuts and fucking candy bars and everything, you know, that four boys are going to buy. Yeah. And then my dad, while we're buying all that, he ate his food. So he'd be like, all that two hot dogs and an ice cream. <laughs> 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 shit uh but the costco hot dog so uh costco love the chain love the franchise a lot of my family actually works for them um but uh the hot dog i say it's undefeated for a couple reasons i believe it started in 1985 the costco hot dog being offered in 1985 it was a dollar 50 now i think we've talked about this beforehand but how much do you think it is today for a hot dog, good size hot dog and a soda? From a I mean, I'll play the now. devil's advocate because I, I know you've told me this before, but I mean, with inflation and everything, it'd be at least eight, nine bucks by now. They're probably like, I'd say like five, maybe six bucks, probably, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's still a dollar fifty. Yeah, it's still <laughs> so like they've they've had to change a couple things. Like they used to use Hebrew National, which was a like their hot dog brand um, yeah and the price point for them stopped making sense so costco's like, okay like we understand that so costco made the kirkland signature hot dog now um they're always finding ways to lower their price to offer that and i believe it was, it was like God, maybe five years ago there's a board room meeting where the new ceo was like okay we might have to raise the price of the hot dog soda combo mm-hmm. Then like one of the founding fought like founders family fathers, one of the founders of Costco in the like the board meeting, it's on their meetings, like, if you raise the price of that hot dog, I will fucking kill you. Like <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, like I will beat the shit out of you. Like he like I don't know if it was kill or beat the shit, but like it was like physical yeah. violent threat that like I will <laughs> strike upon you if you raise the price. That is a dollar fifty hot dog is Costco. Yeah. Like um <laughs> So that dude, you get a good size hot dog, right? It's not like a little tiny one, like dude, it's good size. Um, <laughs> what? what, what like? It does look. It's a good size. Uh, hey. it's, all, it's, all, it's a good size. <laughs> all right, Gary. I don't know what you're doing, yeah. but all right. <laughs> it's a full blown glizzy. All right, like <laughs> you're gonna be left full blown with that glizzy. <laughs> uh, I used to like it like now they they are starting to offer onions again. So for a while during COVID, they took onions and relish and um, a lot of the other toppings that they used to offer. Um, yeah, but dude, for a dollar fifty, you get a good like you're gonna have to go just to get a hot dog from Costco within like the next couple of weeks here. Um, you know what? What sucks is that the nearest Costco to me is an hour away. So if I want to go to Costco, it have to be like a whole day thing. Cabrón, we used to drive an hour to go to Taco Bell. Cabrón, I used to be 18 too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the chiropractor um, now. <laughs> now, so Costco, you have to have a membership, right? Yeah. Um, 
they actually have a really good deal right now. Um, I'll, it's their P and G, which is things for Stanford Procter and Gamble. Like it's a manufacturer of like Dawn and Charmin toilet paper, bounty okay. paper towels. So beyond a lot of those items already being on sale, if you spend a hundred, you get a twenty five dollar gift card. If you spend two hundred, you get a fifty dollar gift card. Oh shit! So right now is a really good time to go stock up on toilet paper, paper towels, dish soap, uh, uh, laundry detergent, you know, dryer sheets, um, a bunch of cleaning supplies, Swiffer dusters, and stuff like that. Like. Um, so like I, I did that and like, you know, I'll be getting a gift card here pretty soon for 50 bucks back. And so even if you went bought the Costco membership, um, which is like, I think the minimum one's $50, 50 or 60 bucks. Like okay. you do that deal, you'll save money on those things you're going to stock up and use anyways throughout the year, toilet paper, yeah. paper towel stuff. These are all things that are going to last in your cabinet all year long. You don't have to worry about them rotting. Um, yeah. And you know, you spend the 200, which is like, dude, it's hard to get out of Costco without spending a hundred bucks. Like, <laughs> dude, uh, anywhere, any, any, any store, any superstore you go to, you can't spend less than a hundred bucks. There's no way. Yeah. And I like, did Costco. There's so many things like they have these, like, Oh uh, no, I'm not going to, I'll save those for another episode for another undefeated, but you have to try, <laughs> uh, I'll give you a list of things you have to buy from there. So that way we can debate them on here. But yeah, dude, <laughs> one of the best hot dogs out there, just flat out best. Like as far as what you're going to get, but for a dollar fifty, dude, that price point, like, if you were broke and lived next to a Costco, like, you'd be stupid to go elsewhere. Yeah. Um, to go, you know, like to eat because like you're not gonna beat that deal. Like. Yeah, I mean, you'll go to Sonic and get a hot dog is like, fifteen bucks with the drink and everything. Oh, dude, yeah, those those stupid uh, the conies, what they call them. The like, conies. Yeah, 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 like that. Those have nothing on a Costco hot dog, dude. Like nothing. Yeah, we'll and, have to see. I'll have to and go. maybe, uh, in, in in a future episode, uh, maybe we'll have to do it in a R.I.P. or in memorandum of the once famous Costco hand dipped ice cream. That fucking thing was legendary, like <laughs> hand dipped ice cream. So yeah, they would take a, a like a, just a like a vanilla on a stick type of a you know. Oh okay. They used to dip it in chocolate and like cover it with nuts, dude. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I think two bucks, but the best two dollars anybody has ever spent in their life. Like <laughs> the chocolate on it was like thick as a chocolate bar, like a Hershey's with like nuts chocolate oh, bar yeah. around it. The inside, like because they just dipped it in like melted chocolate, was like melty but still frozen, like that perfect mixture. Yeah. Um, any like people would like talk shit when I'd be like, dude, have you tried that? Like, dude, I'm not going to like we're gonna get ice cream. Let's go to Cold Stones. Let's go to Baskin yeah. Robbins. Like, no, let's go to fucking Costco before they close, and get one of these hand dipped ice creams. And <laughs> dude, like they are fucking legend. They could bring them back right now, Costco. If you're listening, bring it back. <laughs> I will pay eight dollars for one. Like, like they, if, if you do it the way you did it, then like I would gladly pay. Give me ten bucks for a hot dog, soda, and that ice cream, like, <laughs> like, dude, it's that fucking good. Like, no, um, so I think I think part of it too is the nostalgia. Obviously, I, I think part of yeah. it is that growing up, you would go and, and you grab these items, and and, and it kind of brings back those memories. Yeah, but like, dude, but it's also just the sheer value. Like, yeah, if, if you if you grew up broke at any point, you grow it like in your life, like. You know the value of, you know, like do like having to get that rather than getting the Coca Cola, getting uh, the cola whatever off brand from the soda or from the supermarket, right? Like, yeah. Um, so, growing up broke, you're always seeking out best value, best overall price point, and dude, the dollar fifty for that thing, like, and it, and it's one of those things, like it it it's it's so ingrained in that the Costco structure and that culture that like, it's going to be a hard time before they change that just outright. Cause like they have like this roast beef sandwich. It's okay. Yeah. Um, it's 10 bucks, but dude, for that 10 bucks, you could get a hot dog, which comes with that soda, a piece of pizza or two, a chicken bake, like all for 10 bucks. Like, yeah. Um, so like Costco is trying to find ways of introducing new food items. So, like, okay, maybe we get people, 
less on the hot dogs and more onto these higher priced items to kind of make up for it. But, um, dude, like, again, when you, when you see it, you're going to be like, wow, this is like, you couldn't get something better. Like gas station equivalent would probably be like four bucks. Like, yeah. And that'd be like a shitty gas station option. Like, um, if you're there to have a, a similar one at a baseball game, it'd probably be like a ten dollar hot dog. Um, so a dollar yeah, fifty. But, but going back to that whole nostalgia thing, I mean, you saw the weird shit I did with the ramen, where it's just lemon, some tapatio, and that was it. And again, not even nostalgia. water. <laughs> this fool, could, this fool didn't even have hot water growing up. Apparently, he was eating that shit dry, which I tried, and it's fucking like eating stale chips. <laughs> So yeah, I would add just lime and some tapatio, and that's basically it. And I'll I'll admit it's not the best tasting snack, but it just I don't know it's just part of that nostalgia, and it, it tastes good for me. This fool used to eat like he was going camping all the time. <laughs> Do you remember what your fucking go to protein source was, Governor? <laughs> the canned wieners, <laughs> canned fucking cocktail weenies, like. I was like, he's like, oh, I want grocery shopping and everything went in the cabinet. I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) That one thing needs to go in the fridge? Like, yeah, I went shopping for the week. And I was like, dude, what the fuck did you buy? Like, if anything, the soda, the soda would go into the refrigerator. Other than that, that's about it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I know. So if you guys have any nostalgic foods that you have, I don't know, in mind that popped up, drop it in the comments. Let us know. Yeah, if there's something food item experience even, uh, maybe it was that that like a Chuck E. Cheese or you know that that theme park or um, a certain shoe clothing brand brand uh, whatever me that in your head like there's nothing better than that. It's yeah. undefeated. Let us know, and it could be something as simple as like you know a cold beer after doing lawn yard work. Like to me, that's undefeated. Like. I think it's Dude, the, uh, did you ever try soda in a bag? No. <laughs> I'm showing my culture here. <laughs> so, <laughs> in Mexico, in order to, to get a soda, you either just pay for the full bottle and the drink, or you can either grab the drink, pour it in a, in a bag, then give the bottle back, and you, you get it for cheaper. Um, mm. So people would just pour it in a bag, put a straw in it, drink it, and it tasted amazing. <laughs> I got in a really bad habit as a kid. It's, it, I guess it's it's freaking shittier than your story in a sense that yeah. I used to like putting Sunny Delight, which growing up for us that was that was legit orange juice was the Sunny Delight, like <laughs> like that was or it wasn't like you know orange flavored drink shit that we used to like that was our orange juice the Sunny Delight. But did I used to love getting a bag? putting ice in it, putting Sunny Delight, and then adding a little salt to it. Salt. And then, <laughs> dude, yeah. Uh, and then I used to like, kind of like just bite the corner and just kind of sip on it from that, like that leaky corner. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, that was, I did, I, I don't know how many lunch bags I went through it. Like the little like sam- cheapy sandwich bags mm. that yeah. I used fucking making those little things. Like, and I don't know why, like we had cups, I could have used cups, but like, it was just something about drinking it out of that freaking bag like that. I had a lot uh, of bring weird it back, Bring it back to your favorite podcast, the Are You Ga- Garbage. Uh, did you ever have those gallon uh, fruit juice containers? The, I think they were called Tampico or something. Did you ever have those? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't yeah. think we did. Um, we did. We, we had gallons of those, which, dude, there was so much sugar in that shit. Dude. So much sugar. It, it was bad. Uh what we had more was so we had the big like just a jug for making Kool Aid like huge thing, yeah. and my dad would buy the orange juice concentrate, which is just like this frozen slug of orange, like orange puree, and yeah. you mix that in water, you stir it up, um, and so I remember one time my dad made a freaking like pitcher, a huge jug of it, and dude, so I'm like, all right, cool, like I come home from school or whatever, I go to the fridge, uh. I see a thing of, you know, cold orange juice. I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, go pour myself yeah. a cup. Probably downed it really quick. Go make another one. My dad comes, who the fuck drank all the orange juice? And I was like, uh, <laughs> I had some. He's like, that's for screwdrivers only. Like, 
like we so that was like stay in your lane and stick to the sunny delight like yeah <laughs> anything made with actual oranges should be used for alcoholic beverages like <laughs> uh, oh, but, but that was the thing like drinking juice growing up was perceived as healthy yeah right? like it doesn't it didn't matter how much sugar it had it's an yeah. orange juice that's good yeah. I mean, I remember one time I was like, oh, I want to stop drinking soda. And then, like, I was like, I told my dad, it's all right. And like, we, then we bought apple juice. And like, my dad was talking to one of his friends online, like, well, apple juice, like, that might be just as bad as like drinking soda. It has so much sugar. <laughs> and my dad tried telling me that. And I was like, nah, like, fuck that. Like, I don't want to hear it. Like, I said, no soda. <laughs> I'm not going to give up everything. I'm not freaking, you know, I'm not going to become a freaking monk. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, but yeah, guys, let us know uh, in your books what's undefeated. Give us a like and follow. And I guess until next time, guys, take it easy. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for taking care.